Do you like aircraft? Me too. We should hang out sometime. For this new series, I'm going to talk about one. Today, I will discuss one of my favorite planes, the P-51 Mustang. The birth of the P-51 went sort of like this. In World War II, the North American Aircraft Company, known as the North American Aircraft Company, had produced the B-25 Mitchell medium-range bomber and was planning on opening up another production line for the aircraft. But the head of the Anglo-American Lend-Lease Agreement thingy suggested that instead they use that production line to make licensed P-40 Warhawks, which we'll talk about some other time. He wanted North American to create P-40s because the actual company that made P-40s called the Curtis Company was operating at full power and there was a shortage of P-40s. The president of NAA said that they could produce a better fighter in a shorter amount of time than it would take to set up the P-40 line. Hence, NAA spent the next couple of months looking at British specifications for the new plane, and they also purchased technical data for the Curtis XP-46 plane and used that for some of their research. The P-51 Mustang project began in May 1940, and uh, I'm no expert, but I don't think it takes six plus months to set up a production line, but what do I know, I'm just some kid who makes mediocre history videos for a living. The RAF had ordered 320 P-51s, known as Mustangs in the RAF, and later added another 300 to their order. Two of the Mustang Mark I were given to the U.S. Army as the XP-51. At this time, all planes belonged to the Army, and the Air Force wasn't created until 1948. In October 1940, the prototype NA-73 was created. After a bit more development, the P-51A was created. The P-51A had a supercharger in its engine that caused the plane to perform worse at altitudes of 15,000 feet and above, which is all well and good, except for that's the fact where all the action is at. Actually, in War Thunder, the world's most accurate military vehicle simulation game available on PC and Xbox, the fighters span at altitudes of 4,000 feet or less. In June of 1943, the P-51B entered production and saw use more and more with both the U.S. Army Air Force and the U.S. Army Air Corps, as well as the RAF, who were actually the first country to use the Mustang. Due to its previously mentioned abysmal high-altitude performance, the plane was primarily used as close air support. Now let's talk about bombers. It was previously believed that if bombers were packed tightly together, their defensive armament would fend off enemy interceptors. The strategy proved effective, working about 0% of the time, so the need for a fighter escort became very clear. A lineup of three different aircraft, the P-38 Lightning, the P-47 Thunderbolt, and the only plane that wasn't named after weather, the P-51. The P-51B was picked out, being called the most promising plane in a report. Arguably the most famous version of the P-51 was the P-51D, which swapped out the sloped canopy for a bubble canopy, giving the P-51 its distinct shape. It was also possible to mount additional fuel tanks onto the wings to greatly increase the range of these escorts, making it possible for the bombers to make a round trip to Berlin. The P-51 saw use in defending all sorts of bombing missions, even over Japan. America also gave these planes to other countries, including Australia, Bolivia, Canada, both of the Chinas, Costa Rica, Cuba stole some, the Dominican Republic, which used them until 1984, El Salvador, France, West Germany, Guatemala, Haiti, Indonesia, Israel, Italy, Japan, New Zealand, Nicaragua, the Philippines, Poland, Somalia, South Africa, South Korea, Sweden, and finally Switzerland. The end of World War II saw the P-51 be renamed to the F-51 after the foundation of the U.S. Air Force. The plane saw some action in the Korean War, but was gradually replaced by more powerful jet aircraft like the F-80 or the F-82, which was two P-51s welded together. The P-51 is still in use today as a civilian aircraft, and it is a popular plane in the annual Reno Air Races in Nevada. Every year, my entire stepmom's side of the family goes on this huge camping trip to this gigantic lake, and on our 2021 trip, me and my grandpa were making breakfast, and all of a sudden we hear a plane engine. So we both look out at the water, and a P-51 is flying only about 50 feet above the water, going right over a boat. Which it, it is possible that our editor, Connor, may have also been on. So that's pretty cool.
Thank you for watching. Let me know if you want to see more of this series, and let me know what you think in the comments below. Again, thank you for watching. As always, sources are in the description, and I'll see you next time.